Hello and welcome. I'm Machine Day and I hope you're doing really, really well. So I don't know about you, but I really enjoy those streams that just look really clean and tidy, not overly complicated, and are just really pleasing on the eye. People that try and overcomplicate their streams, often it ends up just looking a little bit cluttered. And personally, I really prefer the clean look. So in this very straightforward video, I'm going to be going through two techniques to create this webcam, a really clean looking webcam with a nice drop shadow that doesn't impact the performance of the broadcasting software software too much. Now I'm going to be doing this in Streamlabs OBS. Now the reason why I'm doing this is because when you use OBS Studio, and I do use OBS Studio 90% of the time, there are plugins that allow you to do some of this stuff. And although they quite significantly contribute to the CPU usage on OBS Studio, within Streamlabs OBS you don't have the same plugins available so you have to get a little bit more creative. Principle number one will be masking of webcams, so in this case making something that's a little bit like this shape here. And this is just something quite straightforward to make it look a little bit more interesting rather than just the typical rectangle shape. In this case, I've used basically the YouTube shape, so literally the YouTube icon shape here. And the second principle I'm going to be using is drop shadows, but we're going to be creating a PNG file, which will just drop underneath this camera to make it look really, really nice. It's probably not all too easy to see with this background here, the animated background that I've got. So I'm just going to show you what it looks like on like a plain colored background. So as you can see here, it's really, really clean and just like a sort all drop shadow on this that makes it pop but isn't too overpowering on the viewer if you enjoyed this video if you like what you see hit the like button feel free to subscribe to the channel because i do loads of videos like this and you'll probably enjoy the content Okay, just to demonstrate, I'm in OBS Studio now because I'm going to record Streamlabs OBS as I do this. But you can see here, there's a, like a purple sheen that I've done across. This is actually a duplication of my webcam, which I've placed behind in OBS Studio. And then I've blurred it out and I've added some color correction to it to make it purple, to make it look cool. But you just simply don't have those same tools available within Streamlabs OBS or XSplit or Twitch Studio or whatever it is that you're using, unless it's OBS Studio where you've got all the plugins to choose from. So I'm going to be using Photoshop to do most of this stuff but i don't want it to be like a full-on photoshop tutorial so i'll try and spend as little time as possible in photoshop we're going to be creating a mask in photoshop and then we're going to be creating the png shadow file and then combining them with some scene nesting now i do also have another video about scene nesting you may want to check that out up there it's really really powerful especially for broadcasting platforms like streamlabs obs where you do not have plugins to source mirror so scene nesting just allows you to get a lot more playful and do some more complicated things in streamlabs obs or non plug based broadcasting software. Gone on to Google, I've searched for the YouTube logo and I've tried to find one that's the shape that I want to use. Now you can use any shape that you want. I'm choosing to use this YouTube logo shape because I just like this sort of almost like classic TV looking shape. But obviously we don't want the actual YouTube logo in there. So what I'm just going to do is right click and copy. A quick tip here, if you're struggling to find the right image, click on tools, click on size and when you want to go for anything that's a large size because it gives you more pixels to work with within Photoshop or you could even use use GIMP, which is like a free version of Photoshop. If you don't have Photoshop, check the affiliate link below. And if you buy through that, you'll be supporting the channel. So I'm just going to right click this and copy the image. And within Photoshop, what I'm going to do is paste it into here. So I'll just delete this layer here. We've got a new layer. Now I want this to be the perfect size. So I'm going to just resize this. Now I've set the canvas here to be 1920 by 1080. You can do that when you click new. You can do it in these sections here, the width and the height, 1920 by 1080. Or if you've got a canvas already open, you can go to image and image size and adjust it here. So this will give me the canvas size that I want, but if you're working on a different canvas size, you want to just make it the maximum canvas size. We will be resizing this later within Streamlabs OBS. So now that we've got our image centered in the space that we want it, what I'm going to just do here is go on this quick selection tool. Now we can either select the black and right click and say, select inverse which will select everything in the middle or you can simply select the middle hold shift and then select that middle section as well by clicking that everything that you want to select and we what we want to be doing here is getting it so that we can basically press delete and leave a perfect hole and this is what we're going to be using as our mask now as it happens this has already got a black background so that's great now all we need to do is keep this middle selection go on the paint bucket tool Select white as our color, select the correct layer that we're going to be working with and fill this white. We now have essentially the perfect mask. All we now need to do is go to file, save a copy, 
and we want to save a copy as a PNG file. So I've already got a copy of this saved here and I've named it TV Shape Cam Mask, but this is not the shadow version. We'll be getting onto the shadow version in a second. And just to briefly explain what a mask will do inside of OBS Studio or Streamlabs OBS or whatever, anything that's white, will be let through and you'll be able to see something that's underneath the layer. Anything that's black will be completely masked out. So essentially, if we had a webcam layer underneath this in OBS Studio or Streamlabs OBS, it would blacken out and not show anything underneath the black and it would show the white bits. Well, the great thing about this is that gradients work as well. So if it's like gray, so like a blend of white and black, it would show like parts of it, almost like a shadowed version. But now what I'm going to do is create the PNG shadow. So to create the perfect drop shadow, we need to select the layer that we've just created we'll just duplicate it by dragging it into this plus icon here or you can right click and say duplicate layer and on this copy layer here i'm just going to rename it shadow and we need to make sure that we're on the shadow layer at all times what i'm just going to do is get the quick selection tool i'm going to select everything that's black here and i'm going to press delete now that's left just a white version here and essentially that's like an image at the moment and if we save this as a transparent png we'd essentially have transparency on the outside and a white image on the inside but that obviously isn't a shadow it's not exactly how we want it yet so just to get the most from the shadow here because we might want a little bit of extra distance i'm going to press ctrl and t on this layer and i'm just going to resize it a little bit smaller and center it on screen and don't worry we can resize this at a later stage within streamlabs obs so it really doesn't matter that this is not quite the right size as long as all the aspect ratios are correct this should work perfectly so now once again on the shadow layer i'm just going to select everything that's black and get rid of it we want absolutely nothing press delete on that we want nothing in this space around it we just want this white here so on the shadow layer now to create the shadow for this i'm going to right click it and click on blending options and i use blending options so much for strokes and drop shadows and all sorts of different things when i'm making thumbnails for youtube now what we're going to do on this shadow layer is add a drop shadow now there's all kinds of different settings we've got on the drop shadow we've got all these different options we've got distance the spread of it the size of it and of course the opacity of the shadow and we can even choose the radial angle of the shadow itself now a quick tip here you can actually drag the shadow and move it around. Now, I'm going to go for a shadow that sort of encompasses the whole circle. And that just means that the whole of the webcam will have kind of like a really subtle shadow around it. But if you prefer to, you can offset that into the bottom corner. Now, what I just want to do at this point is I want to just make sure, fiddle around with the opacity, fiddle around with this distance, whether we want it sort of a, a long distance or not. And the spread can define how much it gets spread exactly like that. And then also the size of it as well. Do you want it like that or do you want it really tight in? And again, a lot of this is just personal preference to what you want. Now that shadow I'm fairly happy with, but I'd probably want to go with a more deeper, more texturized shadow here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another drop shadow and I'm going to change all the properties of this second shadow just to give it a little bit more texture from just the basic shadow. And we could choose to make it a little bit darker with the opacity. And I'm just not quite happy with sort of this layer being a little bit more deeper there than there. So I'm just going to grab the shadow and just bring it up just a little bit. And you can add as many drop shadows as you want here to make this as perfect effect as you want it to be. Once you're happy with it, you need to click OK on that. And then simply, all we need to do is make sure we've got no other layers selected, no other layers like visible, for example, the mask layer or whatever, just the shadow layer. And we need to file, save a copy. And again, we need to save this as a PNG. But we're saving this in this case as a shadow. Now, the preview image will look black like this because it's a PNG. Transparent appear as black as PNGs. So I've already got a copy of this saved, so I'll leave that there. But it's essentially just a white image. Now, what I've just noticed here actually is that the play button is still there so i'm just going to select this on the shadow version there delete that now as we can see the shadows appearing within the middle there we need to make sure that that's not the case so i'm just going to fill this section here just to make sure we've got nothing in there and make sure that's really really clean looking now, i'm fairly happy with that so now we're in obs studio what i'm going to do here is just do some brief sort of scene nesting to make this work as best as possible so what we first need to do is have a new scene and it needs to have just a camera uncropped within it and we're going to basically we add a mask to it first and then the shadow and then we're going to place it on the scene that we want it to be so within this blank scene i'm going to add a video capture device and i'm going to add a webcam now because i'm using this webcam within obs studio the camera's locked so i'm just going to add a new source and i'll add a c920 that i've got just here so i'll just call this the c920 add source and we'll select the c920 which is just up here now just a quick tip here the default resolution won't always default to 1920 1080 so you just want to click a custom resolution and select 1920 1080 and then you'll get the full resolution on the camera. Click done on that. I'm going to right click on the source and I'm going to transform it and fit 
to screen. This will fit it to the screen, assuming that your canvas is the same size as your webcam. If you're having trouble with this, you can just resize it to be a little bit larger if you need to. For example, just stretch it to be whatever you want it to be. But you can also hold down out, which will crop one of the sides of the camera to get it to where you want it to be. But essentially, you want a full screen version of the webcam here. Now, this is where scene nesting becomes really, really powerful within Streamlabs OBS and other programs that don't have source mirroring like in OBS Studio. Instead of adding a filter to the video capture device, which means that every single instance of this C920 camera will have a crop on it or a shadow on it, what I'm going to do is on this new scene, the camera uncropped create a new scene and I'm going to call this C920 cam with filter and I'm going to put YouTube shape as the filter there so we've got our new scene here which is completely blank now I'm going to add a new scene and here's the trick I'm going to add a scene which is the scene with the uncropped camera in so we'll just select this. Now, essentially, this looks exactly the same, but the difference is it's a scene that we can edit rather than the original camera source. And that is the beauty of scene nesting and the real power that it can give you when you're making scenes and sources and doing quite complicated things, especially when you're not in OBS Studio. So now what I'm going to do is on the scene itself that we've just created, now not on the source here, because if I add the filter to this source, it may reflect over here as well. So on this whole scene, I'm going to right click it. I'm going to click filters. And here we want to add a image mask and blend. We'll click done on that. And then we just need to browse to the file where we've got the YouTube mask shape that we created a little earlier. So I'm just going to select the TV mask and cam shape here, which is 1920 by 1080. And as soon as I press OK on that, you'll see this gets a mask around it. Now, don't be fooled here. It looks like this is black, but it's actually not. It's transparent. And I can prove that later in the video. We just want to make sure that the type is alpha masks. So the color channel here, click done on that. Now we've got our masking shape. We just need to put the shadow in, in play here. So now what I'm going to do is create another scene. I'm going to call this C920 Shadow and Mask. So this will have both the shadow and the mask in it. And we can add that scene at a later stage to our main scenes. So we'll click OK on that. Once again, we've got a blank scene here. I'm going to click the plus icon to add a new source. We're going to add a scene. And guess what? We're adding the scene that we've just created. The one with the camera that has the YouTube shape on it. And we can see a preview of it here. So we'll click add source here. And straight away, we've got a scene that is fully cropped. Now, what we now need to do is resize this down just a little bit. And I'm going to right click this transform and I'm going to center it on screen. This puts it perfectly in the center of the screen. Now all we need to do is add another source, which is an image. We're going to add, as we can see here, it accepts PNG images, add source. We're going to call this image uh, shadow YouTube TV. I'm going to browse to the image file and we want to go to the shadow file that we made earlier. Click OK on that. We can already see that the shadow is appearing there. So we know that this is working, but we've got the size to get correct. And we've also got to put it behind the camera as well. So I'm just going to drag this source below the camera. Now it's obviously still behind. So I'm now just going to resize this and just spend a minute or so adjusting this. Now what we need to aim for here, if you want to, you can leave a little bit of an outline if you want an outline, or you may have some other animated outline that you want to add in here as well. I'm just going to keep it nice and simple and really clean. I'm just going to have this slightly smaller. Now what you can do here is use the arrow keys on your keyboard just to make very minor adjustments. I think we just need to bring it in just another pixel or two. And I think that is now about right. So we now have a third scene, which is C920 shadow and mask. And we're going to add this to our main scene. So here's our main scene. I've just got an image here for now, but this could be your background or your gameplay or whatever. I'm going to click on the plus icon. And again, we're adding a scene, but this time we're adding the scene that has both the shadow and the mask. Click add source on that now straight away we can see this is full size so it's not exactly the size that we want it so i'm just going to resize this down add this to wherever we want to add it on the scene and as we can see we've got this really really clean looking masked and shadowed version but the great thing about this is because it's a png image which is essentially like a flat file Streamlabs OBS or XSplit or whatever program you're using to broadcast isn't trying hard to do all kinds of weird transparency with that. It's not having to render that transparency on the fly because it's a fixed image and that reduces the load on Streamlabs OBS. Okay, so that was drop shadows on webcams and also using masks to change the shape of a webcam. Hopefully you found this useful. If you did, again, hit the like. I'd really appreciate it. And yeah, have a good day. Take care.